you know, sometimes, not always, but maybe like once every three or four years, Ryan and I are wrong about something. And that happened last week. We, we, we were wrong about, uh, about the fact that we thought, we got all excited and we thought WandaVision was going to have 10 episodes, but it was a blue moon and all the stars aligned, which meant that we happened to be wrong that night. And uh, this actually was the final episode of WandaVision, but it's not the final episode. It was an Infinity Rewatch with Andrew Fantasia and Ryan J. Whitehead. Woo! Yeah! Because we're still alive! Woo! Bada da da How's it going, Ryan? It's going good, man. So uh, here's the thing, okay? If we're talking... If we're talking about, you know, our misinterpretation of things, let's let's put all the cards on the table here, my friend. Let's not play poker. Let's just lay it all out. Let's just put the cards down. Um, first of all, here's how it's done, my friend. So first of all, that post was terribly worded. It was. <laughs> it's not our fault. It's Marvel's fault. <laughs> we still love you, Marvel. We love you with our, our whole hearts and souls. But I will say that, uh, yeah, we're not wrong. Marvel was wrong. Um, but anyway, uh, the other thing I want to say is when you get into the heat of speculation with Marvel, as you, as you've probably heard on these podcasts, we've been all hyped up and excited about all these little secrets and everything that's in it. Um, that being said, I think that's the, 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 the magic of Marvel in the sense, in the sense that, you know, you're super invested when you're trying to pick up every little detail and that being said, we have been disappointed before, and there are things I'm a little sad that we didn't get to see in this one yet, although mm-hmm. I, I still think certain things are in the works. Um, I would say that that's, that's, this is what Marvel does, guys. This is, this is where Marvel thrives, is when everyone is speculating about all the little details. For them, they could be like, oh yeah, she has a friend that works in uh, aerospace engineering. Uh, we'll we'll call it out, you know, and then we'll just see what happens. And I think Marvel is okay with that. I think as like TV writers and movie writers, like they'll be like, oh yeah, um, you know, uh, the the Agatha's, you know, really hinting at, you know, Quicksilver is really Mephisto. Like this stuff, Marvel thrives on. And to be honest, they may or may not have an answer, and that's okay with them because for us. That just demonstrates how invested we are in the brand. And it's genius because all this social media that went around trying to figure out all this stuff is all advertising for Marvel. And it's brilliant, man. It's br- I'm not even upset. I'm not even upset. Am I sad that we didn't get it? Yeah, I'm a little bit, but I'm not like super disappointed or upset. Like, it's genius. It's I, I, I'm glad that we were starting to speculate. I really am. Even though we were talking about predictions and everything and it didn't quite pay out. We will talk about some of the things that did pay out through this episode. Speculation is always fun, but it's always a double-edged sword. And I think that that's, that's a huge takeaway that I want us to, to carry with us from this first Marvel show. Uh, if, if I was the person in charge of Netflix right now, I would put on a pair of boots and then start shaking in them. Because Netflix's whole formula of like, here's a show, binge it all. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't create the kind of conversation as something like the Mandalorian and something like WandaVision. These two shows that Disney Plus has given us have hearkened back to you know to the the feeling of prestige TV, the feeling of water cooler TV, the feeling that Game of Thrones and Lost and Heroes gave us back in the day. Those kinds of shows are the ones that keep conversations going. I love Cobra Kai. I love Stranger Things there's not conversations really going about those. They happen. People are, you know, hashtagging them for like a week and then they fizzle away. Why? Because everybody binges. Uh, And, you know, that's, I'm not pointing any fingers. I binge too. Stranger Things season three came out. I was like, okay, nine episodes in a row. Let's go. Um, But this is something different. And because of it, we have spent nine weeks, Ryan, which is an insane amount of time when you think about it. We spent nine weeks talking about friggin' Agatha Harkness and like, Mephisto's hair. And it's, it's, I spent nine weeks talking about this shit, but I love it. Now, it is a double-edged sword when it when it's uh, when you get speculation that's heavy like this, because a lot of times when fans are really rabid and sweaty like us, we tend to let the speculation get ahead of the show. That happens all the time. 
Yep. That that happened on Lost. And what happened? Millions of people were disappointed because the show didn't fit in with their expectations. The show had a great ending, which I will go to my dying breath and say the ending of Lost was one of the most emotional, beautiful pieces of television I've ever watched in my life. But there are people out there who are like, oh, they didn't do what I wanted, so it's the worst uh, series ever. And I guarantee you the same thing is going to happen with WandaVision. It did a lot of stuff that was great, but it also didn't do a lot of stuff that everybody was squeezing and itching for. And all those YouTube videos of like Magneto and all that. <laughs> not not, not going to be pleased, whoever made that video. And that person, unfortunately, we're not going to go into... I would say for the next like two, three months, Ryan, especially after Falcon and Winter Soldier ends, mm -hmm. we're going to see a huge spike in those. Oh, I hate them so much. Those stupid clickbait aggregate articles where like, here's 15 reasons why WandaVision was actually a major disappointment. <laughs> uh, and that's, and I guarantee you that it's going to be full of like little things where it's just whatever stooge was writing that article is like, they didn't include what I thought they would. It should really be called, here's 15 theories I had that WandaVision mm -hmm. didn't validate, so therefore I'm about to whine about it. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen a lot. So I want yeah. to lay my cards next to yours on the table, Ryan, and say this finale had stuff I loved. It had a, one or two things I was really not a fan of, but overall, I don't care that none of my theories were fueled. I'm just happy we got a cool ending to a very very cool show you know i i was first of all we need to set the tone here and i think this is one thing that's been completely undermined throughout this thing i mean it was mentioned a little bit uh right at the start and like kind of midway through but i still don't think it was like emphasized enough and that is is like this is the most accurate or the most lively or sorry the most information giving in terms of what happened after the Thanos snap because or or sorry what after what ha what happened after the events of Endgame because those Spider-Man covered a lot of ground in explaining like oh what happened with the blip you know there's been this 5 year gap all this stuff we still don't know how the Avengers themselves aside from Spider-Man felt out of it and spider-man's relatively new he was only g given avenger status during the 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 events of infinity war so um in the end though the major team that we've invested story into we haven't seen their their stories yet and wanda's didn't disappoint and i will i will argue overall this is this is huge success for marvel and it was a risk and this is where marvel thrives captain america one was a risk thor was a risk. Iron Man was a risk. The, these are all risk-taking stories that they try for, um, and then once they get it right, they'll they'll escalate and build on it. But this one was a risk. The first two episodes were weird and different, but it was if you just simplify it and look back at the whole overarching story now, which I can't wait to have an Infinity rewatch, like just rewatch it. Um, I can't wait to revisit this because in the end, this is someone who's processing like depression. Like this is, mm -hmm. this is sad. Like this is a sad story. And, and this episode was just a throwdown. This was just emotions unleashed everything. Like, I don't think the stakes could have been higher. And I know as an actor, the stakes can always be higher, but no, I don't think the stakes could have been higher for this character. It was insane this was this was but this this did not disappoint this was dragon ball z of marvel like and it, what's crazy is also i will say is you look at the events of like endgame and the scale of these battles like wanda's battle was not tame it was it was pretty intense and i would say almost as intense as like some of the fights in infinity war which is pretty incredible yeah these fights were you know i'm looking at them i'm like this is some cinematic level cgi this isn't stuff you normally see on a show yeah and you mentioned a rewatch and i i just thought in my head right now i'm like i don't know you know i don't know technology so i don't know i'm sure this is possible but what i think would be nice completely you know unnecessary like it's not like we demand this but it, it would be kind of cool is for them now that we have all the episodes are there for them to create like a new 
10th file under the WandaVision icon where you can watch it all as just one six hour movie without having to like select a new episode just mm-hmm. to kind of give it that feeling and see if it works the same. Because now we don't have to worry about, you know, Cliffhanger is waiting another week. You can just, whenever an episode would have normally ended, you can just kind of cut to black for a second or just cut away. I don't think it would require too much editing, but I don't know. I think that'd be kind of fun to watch it mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I do hope they do that. I know in the theaters back when we used to go to theaters. Um, I remember those. Yeah, they would do marathons. They would do like marathon events. Um, and I remember they advertised that they would do a Marvel phase one day and then a Marvel phase two day. And I was, I was, I was excited by the idea of it, but then I realized like you're in a movie theater for like 10, like solid hours, Mm -hmm. like no breaks, nothing. Like you're just going constantly. Right. Maybe like about like a five minute break between movies, but you're in there for a long time. Um, but yeah, like I agree. I think that this, this kind of platform, I think this is where you want to really mesh them all together. Um, because again, I, I like, li- like, I want to listen back to our podcast now because like those first two episodes when they aired them, it was weird. It was weird to be given that for the, for the week to marinate with, but mm-hmm. it also was a good tone setter because, you're you're already asking the question the obvious question which is what is going on yeah and uh, thankfully they gave us those two in a row because that would have been nuts if after two weeks we finally see the splash of color and we still don't know anything about what's going on outside so i'm i'm glad that like i think it was paced perfectly with how they spread that love around Mm -hmm. so let's start this episode by talking about what Hayward referred to as, I think he called it Project Cataract, Mm -hmm. which I think was a perfect term for white vision because a cataract is literally a a thing on your eye that impedes your vision. Uh, So I've just been taken to calling him Cataract in my head. I don't know if that's an official name from the comics or if they just made that up for the show. But Just called him Vision, man. Just just called him Vision. Oh, wow. So they just made it up for this show then, and that is brilliant. Um, I want some beautiful action figures of vision and cataract because they both looked great uh and their fight kind of lasted for almost half the whole episode they were just up in the sky the whole time just bombarding each other and despite the fact that we got completely trolled by paul bettany that fight was everything i hoped it would be it was and 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 this is this is that example of investment right like we were we were invested as fans and i you know Normally, in a, in a situation like this, if it were a director being like, oh, we got a big cameo and then this kind of thing happens, a lot of fans would be upset. But at the same time, you love Marvel too much to be really upset about these kind of things. I mean, <laughs> Bettany really trolled the fans on this one, like super, super well. But at the same time, we're not disappointed uh, in terms of the things. Now, I do remember being told that Doctor Strange would make a cameo in this. And I was told by some marvel sources that this was going down like that that the stories would tie in but again it could be all misinterpretation at this point um however i do have a way to talk about this so i'm we're gonna get to it in a minute uh anyway so the fight vision fight when as someone who appreciates action movies like i do i've i've watched many b level c level um but also a level action movies and you know, you want the fight to feel like a wrestling match. You want the wrestler to come in, have that intro, and just, you know, have that presence that makes you be like, this is going to be a match. And Vision comes in, and, and or uh, yes, Project Cataract Vision comes in and just takes on Scarlet Witch right then and there, holds her up, and just Ooh. like, and I thought you were powerful. And like, so brilliant. And then Vision, the, the real Vision comes, well, the quote unquote real vision comes in uh, and then the throwdown starts and I love it. It was such vision fighting by density shifting um, just the, the crunch, the crunches of the punches. And, uh, and on top of that, just the beam shooting, like it was, it was on vision unleashed as much as it was Scarlet Witch unleashed. And it was uh, the fight was just to drool over as someone who loves fight scenes, um, CG fight scenes, you're always worried that it's not going to play out nicely um but marvel seems to have found the right balance when it comes to using cg in a fight scene 
But the cool thing is, too, is first of all, Cataract Vision looked amazing. I love the updates they did to the suit. It looked more robotic, um, but still like giving them that kind of human look. Um, and yeah, just I love that they wrecked the town. Like a lot of collateral damage in this one. The, the RV exploded, like windows crushed, walls broken. It was wicked. It was also scary, though, too, because again, the stakes were so high. We saw Agatha rope in the kids and I, I even texted you i'm like man i totally forgot that this started on like some pretty high stakes with her holding the kids hostage and then the casting of the spells yeah they they um didn't really pull any punches i think with the vision cataract fight like it wasn't i was expecting it to be awkward because it's the same actor and that can always get awkward when you have two actors fighting each other yeah uh but it didn't feel that way at all and it looked gorgeous and it sounded gorgeous and then to have it end with that debate about the ship of theseus paradox and like turned into a battle of wits i'm like th that was my favorite part it's oh just so the, good like ah the the fact that he he finds the core of vision through this this exchange uh and then it's like a, a a switch is flipped and all of a sudden cataract He's, he's computerized. They're gone, baby. There's no more computerized. Now it's just good old Paul Benton, mm -hmm. baby blues. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm good now. And, yeah. <laughs> and he flies away for, for uh, future unknown. Um, the, the, but the action was very cool. And I, I, I know you're a big action guy. So if, I, if it pleases you, I know that it's, it's good all around. If you it's could done, recommend, it's right. exactly, it's done the job. If you could recommend one C list action movie for our listeners, what do you recommend it for them? C list. Uh, hold on. Oh, <laughs> dead or alive. <laughs> Just... Oh my god, the volleyball girls. <laughs> it is. It is. Some some of the coolest fight scenes are in there, but the story is just brutal. And the casting is weird, but in the end, there are some really cool things that they do that are just pretty fun to watch. Um, but whew, it's 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 an experience, man. <laughs> That's a good choice. I like mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. Dead or alive, everybody, look it up. It's not on Disney Plus, thank God, but it's somewhere. <laughs> It's somewhere out there in the ether. <laughs> right, but we should also get into the the Battle of Witches, and I. I like this because you also got to understand the multi-genre approach that Marvel has done. Like this is not an easy task to do. It's been mm -hmm. tried and it's been, it's failed before, but this kind of sci-fi witch battle was amazing. It was so fun. And, and what's interesting about it is, is again, um, I like the idea that magic has rules. And, yeah. and so the kind of clever thing they did to keep the 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 suspense moving through the the whole thing is that they establish what those rules are um so you are what's what's interesting is in a fight scene you know the hero is going to win in most and and you know who the hero is you know who the villain is and we know that the hero is going to come out we just need to know how they're going to do it but what i think is interesting about the rules of magic is is that the that that changes the narrative of how the hero is going to win constantly because um as you can see it's like okay the hero could just easily do this but you can't because there's this going on and then it becomes uh different layers and wanda's battle was just so interesting because that played out throughout the entire finale was okay wanda wanda is like the most powerful witch so she should be able to topple her with the power doesn't work that way because Agatha can, can absorb it. So, okay, now the rules have changed and it keeps, there's, there's extra layers as we go. So talks about that, the giant hex over the city narrative changes. Okay. So she can't use the city. Uh, so she's going to try to tear it down, but she can't do that because then if she does, then she loses vision. And then now it's two versus one. So there's all these constant, constant uh, elements that are always changing the, the narrative of the battle. Yeah, and I, you're absolutely right about the, like, just how hard it would be to squeeze this in to this world. Like, the MCU is a world, it's a world where the the movie The Winter Soldier and the movie Iron Man exist. Mm -hmm. 
and everything kind of revolves around science and how even like the most far-fetched things like Asgard are, you know, we're, we're not magic. We're just, and we're not gods. We're just beings from another dimension, whatever. So yeah. how do you take this world where those are the rules and be like, yes, but also witches. And by the way, their magic is color coded because mm -hmm. it's Marvel and everything's color coded. And I love that so much. Even my books have color coded magic in them. So <laughs> good, on, good on you, Marvel. Uh, like, how do you fit that square peg into this round hole? Mm -hmm. And they do it. They do it and they do it in a way where it feels seamless. Like there's never, without even pointing at it, without even having the character say, oh, you know, look at this, look how different these are. We got just the visual of that scene last week where all those witches are shooting blue fire at Agatha and she's like, nope, purple. That, you know, there's no dialogue saying, look at her magic. It's different from ours. You don't need it. We take one look and we're like, that means something else. And yes. we've known Wanda for all this time. We've known she's got the red. We know she's different too. And the the whole idea of like, yes, the hero has to win. How are they going to win? It becomes a matter. Of, and I think the best ways that these things can happen, the best ways heroes can win uh, a fight is by changing the game without changing the rules. Uh, so if you're in a chess match and you're constantly being put in check, you I think the best stories win by not playing chess anymore, but by swapping it for Battleship and throwing mm -hmm. the villain off. Yes. And that's exactly what we got here because mm -hmm. she does something that is, it doesn't go against the rules of Marvel that Marvel has set. It actually takes us back to some very original rules because Wanda uses the power from Age of Ultron on Agatha. And I'm just like, yes, that's what you do, girl. You go back to what worked before. Agatha hasn't shown us that she's been able to do that. So you flip that on her. You're still using your witchcraft, mm -hmm. but you're not, it's not just like, I'm going to shoot a beam at you. Yep. And all of a sudden, tables turned. Absolutely. And, and the cool thing is about this witch, witchcraft fight. Um, uh, first of all, I can, I can see so many fans just loving this, like just eating up. Like we're talking cosplayers are going to have, uh, field day with this with this episode in general cosplayers um, priests <laughs> that's it just those two groups you know, well i mean like i mean like you know people who do vision like they they get some new approaches to vision but i mean even agatha and in uh and agatha's outfit i love that we actually i thought it was just going to be a tease that we see the kind of old agatha outfit but again they modernized it so well and we get to see her wear it quite a bit um, and then, oh my God, the, the Scarlet, the Scarlet Witch reveal. Um, now the cool thing is, is that the Scarlet Witch reveal is interesting because Agatha actually drops, um, the book again and makes reference to the book, but now we finally get the name and you texted me right away. Mm -hmm. Uh, you were just like, oh my God, dark hold. Like, oh the wow. Dark hold. Now this is where I got to call on your comics knowledge, sir. Yeah. Tell us about the dark hold. I know there's a group called the dark hold redeemers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I learned that from those skybox cards, but that's all I know. Right. So the, okay. The dark hold book. Okay. So this is, this is the book. This is like, the Book of Dark Magic, which is interesting because this book uh, has uh, it kind of came from the dark dimension. So great for kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great read for kids. Um, now, the, the, this book has had different owners in the whole nine yards. Um, it's It's been through, it's like, like before the dawn of time. Okay, so I have my notes here. I got to kind of go through it. Um, so this has gone through the dawn of time. It was actually uh, created by an evil elder god known as Cthon. Cthon, I think it's Cthon. C H T H O O N. Cthon. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's a demigorg uh, of essentially the god eater, um, which is interesting because in Thor Ragnar or uh, the next Thor movie, uh, they have the god butcher. So yes. there could be some relation there. The God uh, Butcher cuts up some God meat and the God Eater is like, thank you. And he puts yeah. it in a pot, wraps it up and takes it home. Yeah, exactly. Right. So now the interesting thing about um, about this book is if you want to look at it from a fantasy perspective, it's kind of like the Necro Necronomicon. It's like this the source of evil, right? Um, so 
Doctor Strange is kind of the current owner of this book. Um, he's a protector of it. He doesn't use it because it's because of the power. I mean, we've already seen the examples of this story um, kind of in Doctor Strange where he talks about how he talks about how, um, you know, you can't you can't use uh, Dormammu's power in order to keep you alive to represent good, because in the end, you know, uh, you know, power corrupts and absolute power, you know, corrupts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. So we've already kind of seen ex an example of this. Now, the cool thing about this book is, like I said, it's like the source of evil, right? But there's some cool things that it has. It, it can conjure dark magic, uh, which is where Agatha gets her power from. Um, here's the fun one. You ready for this? Yeah. It's the, uh, it also contains the origins of vampirism. Ooh, yeah, because I know... I rem and literally, again, I, I can only go back to these trading cards for reference. But that trading card of the Darkhold Redeemers mm -hmm. had a group of people on it, like five or six people. The one front and center was like this. Remember, this was the 90s, folks. So it was this girl in like leather dominatrix BDSM fetish yeah. apparel. Yep. Uh, but behind her was Blade. Yes. He yes, was one of the, the Darkhold Redeemers. So our first whiff of Blade yeah, exactly. And this is where I think the Doctor Strange thing comes into play a little bit because Doctor Strange, um, I think, will possess this book at some point. Um, now, the interesting thing you messaged me about this uh, is that Doctor Strange uh, with the Darkhold book, um, first of all, uh, Agatha mentions that, you know, this chaos magic is enough to beat the Sor Sorcerer Supreme. And that is a factual moment in the comic. D during the events of House of M and near the end, uh, Doctor Strange comes in and hypnotizes her and then kind of resets the whole thing. I kind of agree that they probably shouldn't have done Doctor Strange coming in to save the world because we this is this is about Wanda's strength, like her yeah. ability to endure. So to put Doctor Strange in there might have kind of kind of just hurt that, you know what I mean? Like really kind of it would have been more of Doctor Strange story at the end being like he rescues everybody. So yeah. I like that. I like that they did that. Um, so yeah, this book though. So this book um, in the end is like, it also gives access to Dormammu and, and you know, it's also you know, helps, helps Mephisto and, and also stuff like that. Um, this book has a lot of history also with the Eternals. So we might actually see some uh, Eternals stuff uh, thrown in there as well. Um, so there's, this book actually does become a Rosetta stone, I think in the MCU for potential stories that could all connect such as Dr. Strange, Blade, and even the Eternals. I love it. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that that was, uh, like, that's one of my favorite little seeds. Cause there are a lot of seeds for the future mm -hmm. in this episode. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that all the theories in the world didn't really count on is yes seeds for the future all, all the theories seem to be about what's going to happen in wandavision not so much about what is wandavision going to set the stage for later right. down the road and there's more mm -hmm. of that after but at this point in the story we've ugh, the dark hold makes me so happy and i love that it's orange yeah. uh, but at this point in the story we get to my least favorite part of the episode Ooh. and that is the sort of culmination if you will uh or rather the answer to what's up with quicksilver yes yes okay i was actually about to question like what your what your yeah what your disappointment was but i also agree this was kind of a but i think it's 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 um it's a it's a tool of magic which is misdirection i think i think we're meant to be deceived that quicksilver is not we shouldn't be looking into quicksilver i hope this is a misdirection. I hope there's more because here's the thing. You and I were like gung ho, like little kids for beast. Right? Yeah. We were like, beast is going to show up. Beast didn't show up. That's nobody's fault, but our own. Cause we, we drew that conclusion. We got excited. That's, that's no, the that's fact the that magic of Marvel. Like, that's, that's the, the magic. magic of Marvel. It's yeah. nobody's fault, but our own. Yeah. Just because beast wasn't in it doesn't mean we hate WandaVision. It just, we, we jumped on that train with love in our hearts 
And it didn't take us to the station we wanted, but it got us there and it got us there in time. And the food on the train was really good. Mm -hmm. So that is not a reason. That's not a cause for concern or cause for complaint. What I do have a problem with is when you go to the trouble of casting Evan Peters. I mean, as far as I have heard, it's not like the the Age of Ultron Quicksilver guy said no, as far as I've heard. Maybe he has. But you go through the trouble of casting the other Quicksilver, the only case like in existence where there's two actors playing the same guy in different franchises under different studio banners, and you make it this big deal, and you talk about how we're finally merging, eventually going to merge all the Fox, all the mutants, all the Fantastic Four into the MCU. How are we going to do it? Stay tuned. And then you wheel this guy out as this big cliffhanger moment and be like, wow, look what we did. And then say he's an actor named Ralph Boner. That's deliberately lying to your audience. That's deliberately being like, ah, no, no, just kidding. And that is the, on them. The beast thing is on us. That's our own fault for getting ahead of ourselves and, and like wanting beast. But that is on them. And I, so I hope you're right in the sense that there's that is in fact the introduction of the other Quicksilver and what, and it's going to lead to something actually more appealing mm -hmm. and more profound than I'm just an actor named Ralph Boner who happens to be played by Evan Peters. Well, Hey, because that is misdirection for the sake of misdirection. And it's, it's not cool. I think it, but okay. So what I'm trying to say here is, is I, I think, I don't know if how you're interpreting right now, how I'm saying misdirection. Cause I think you're right. In terms of, I, I think that you're not, I'm not saying you're wrong here. I think that the way I'm, I want to make sure that I'm clear in terms of delivering what I'm saying with misdirection. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. This is something that sucks because it kind of, it, it becomes a dead end and you never want your viewers to feel like it's a dead end. And exactly like this is, this is the opposite of that Marvel magic we were talking about because we're so invested in WandaVision's world we're starting to question like, what does this mean? What does that mean? Like, you know, like, which is good. That's, that's where you want your viewers. And I, that's where I think Kevin Feige and his creative team are brilliant at um, is like, is doing that. Now, the flip side of that is again, I think what they're, this is one of those things where I think Kevin Feige and the creative team are trying to talk to us, but not deliberately say what, what it means. Um, and when I say that they're talking to us, I say that it's one of those things like it's one of those reassurances that like, look, mutants are coming, but this is not what you're looking for. So, for example, like everyone's like, oh, Evan Peters in X-Men. So that means we're going to get like um, we're going to get uh, the actress who plays Sansa Stark to come back as Jean Grey. We're going to get, you know, we're going to get Olivia Munn as Psylocke. We're going to get, you know, all these people back and, and everyone's happy. Right um i think what that means is is like kevin feige is trying to say to us like look mutants are coming but they're not going to be who you think they are right yeah. because because it would have been again had that been a quicksilver payoff then it would have let us down that road of like okay so does that mean like all the x-men characters are like coming through the alternate dimension kind of thing like you see what i mean like you don't want to like i think it was a smart dead end does it 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 emotionally it sucks it does it feels really crappy but but at the same time it's it's logically it's smart because it's setting the expectations a certain way without deliberately saying it right like kevin Feige doesn't have to go on the internet tomorrow and be like yes okay we're doing mutants now and this is what we're doing right like it right now it's it's like okay guys don't worry mutants are coming Here's Quicksilver to kind of, you know, set that set that expectation, but we're not going to cast them the same way. I think that that they're talking to their fans and this is the symbolism of it. I see. Okay, yeah, and that makes sense to me. That mm -hmm. makes sense to me. I I think as long as it doesn't get into just a territory of just like teasing and trolling. Yeah. Because then that is like you're wasting precious time in the story that could be devoted to something that actually matters. Exactly. Right? Like, right. and this is where I agree with you, why it feels disappointing because mm -hmm. with WandaVision, we only get, and I think this episode was, was pretty much the hour. Like this was the one hour episode we were looking for. And, and as you could see, like we didn't want to waste a minute 
and because everything needs to be explained everything every answer because as far as we know this is the only one division we're getting and i'm pretty sure they confirmed at this point i think it's actually official that they're only doing one season yeah that's what they planned for so at this point you do need to wrap up the story and that's why you cannot waste a minute and yes i agree with you that it's kind of like kind of feels like a dirty joke and it's not it's not like funny it's just kind of weird like they that kind of weird humor but at the same time this is i think this is one of those things where it's actually a smarter thing for the for the people in the the front of the the cinema as my brother would describe it mm -hmm. um where it's like again like guys don't worry mutants are coming here's quicksilver but we're not going to cast the same all the maybe even all the same people we're not going to use every single same person we just want to set that expectation for you. So this is why we did it this way. Yeah. I, I think that like they just have to be careful how they use that tactic. Because yes. if if we had gotten Ultron Quicksilver, yeah, that would have been exciting to me. Even though I I actually don't like that actor, the guy who plays him in Ultron. I don't know what it mm -hmm. is. I'm sure he's a nice guy in real life, but he's just he does nothing for me. But mm -hmm. if he had shown up, that would have been like an exciting pop for me because I'm like, oh my God, we get to see Quicksilver again. And then Evan Peters is a different layer on top of that. And it, it turned it into some, like all, I think all Kevin could have done is just, you know, when he's describing WandaVision in a press conference or whatever, all he, all he had to say was like exactly what you're saying, Ryan is like, guys, mutants are coming, uh, but it's going to be fresh faces. That's it. That's all he would have had to say. Mm -hmm. To say it like this is a bit sneaky. And again, like you, you would have gotten the same amount of joy out of me with Ultron Quicksilver just without this, this mm. thread that ended up not being a thread. And like, you know how Sebastian Stan, everybody's like, Sebastian Stan should play young Luke because he looks just like Luke. Yeah. Imagine if in Mandalorian, we didn't get that Mark Hamill thing, but instead we got Sebastian Stan is on the show and he shows up and he's in a hood and all, all you know, it's all mysterious, whatever. And he's using the force. And then at one point he puts down his hood. He's like, my name is Frank. <laughs> like, that's that's what's going yeah. that feels like like you don't need to do that just give us that ending mm -hmm. and then throw luke at us we don't see it coming no. and we're all the more pleased so i i i, I get 100 percent what you're saying and you're right it's it's i think it's smart to move away from fox's mm -hmm. people and just use fresh faces but i don't think that was the smartest way to to tell that yeah to the fans. and you're totally right and and i this is this is where we just you know agree to disagree kind of yeah. thing and and i i like that though because again this goes back to interpretation which was where the marvel magic takes place right like did we get beast no we i feel like we should have because the way the evidence was starting to stack up but at the same time you're right like if they're gonna do this they should just come out and say like look we're doing the mutants which he did say he said there will be mutants uh, but he didn't say how he was going to cast them or whatever. As far as we know, it's all speculation. So, but this is this is that this is the Marvel conversation, and this is yeah. this is when you recognize how invested you are. So, I totally agree with you with that. So, and 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 that was like a good five minute sequence. Like it was cool to see him flex his power a little bit, and 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 seeing oh my god, Spectrum in full action mode, like. Ooh, man, that was cool. She's like um, the Flash. She's catching yeah. bullets all over the place. Well, and and yes, and this is... So let's talk about that, too, because this point, we... Yes, so Spectrum breaks out and gets out of there and does her thing, which is awesome. Uh, the other thing that was really cool was that... Um, the other thing that was really cool was we do get her back to the town, and, and, and I like how Agatha is using the people and waking them up. And I almost had a moment where I'm, I was going to text you and be like, oh, my God, Arcana, because Dottie had the yellow coming off her face. But yeah. remember that Vision did that with a ton of different people. He would use yellow electricity, if you will, to, to wake them up. Yeah. Um, so there was there was a, like five seconds. I was starting to text you and I was like, <gasps> and I was like, wait a minute. And then, <laughs> and then I realized like, okay, and this was another good, this is another good way to debunk those things, Easter eggs. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this one was not the Quicksilver kind of debunk. This was just kind of like, okay, good try guys. Not, mm -hmm. not where we're going with this, right? Moving on. And so that was fun. Um, but yeah, seeing Spectrum come in and again, I love how, marvel designs powers i actually watched 
uh, the bonus features of uh, Age of Ultron, and they were talking about how to design Quicksilver, and the process they use to do it is is absolutely incredible. And seeing her absorb those bullets was so cool. Yeah, she looked, and, and the more I looked at her this episode, like I, I was thinking back to what you said back when we first met her on this show, and I'm like, God, like she looks exactly like a Fantastic Four character, like that outfit. I like I am convinced now when they eventually show up, they're gonna be part of Sword. Because that outfit is exactly like their outfit. Like it's almost funny how similar it is. Honestly, you just change the tones and then instead of the sword logo in the middle, it's a Fantastic Four icon and boom, there you go. Fantastic Four outfit. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's that it is that simple. It's that simple. And I that, I think that movie is going to sneak up on us. I think it's 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 coming up sooner. Like the seeds for it are going to come up sooner than we think. Well, but okay. That... Speaking of that, because we got the official title of Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, and and that means uh, we're going to see a trailer soon. And I'm assuming that I'm, I'm actually pretty sure that uh, uh, John Webb, I think it is. John Webb? Mark uh, Webb? Mark Webb. Oh, no, 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 no. You're, we're, we're both mixing it's... them up. Uh, Mark and, Webb did Amazing Spider-Man. John Watts. John Watts. Yes, yeah. that's right. John Watts. Yes, we were mixing that. Up. <laughs> we were, uh, yeah, we so, created a new human out of our mix-up. <laughs> so John Watts. Uh, I uh, I think that he's close to wrapping production on Spider-Man, which means he's. I'm pretty sure he's already started on Fantastic Four. I'm pretty sure because you, you got to understand, like the editors are probably working like crazy, but they have to present to him where where they're at with their editing and then he will make his necessary mentions and stuff but i i don't know how hands-on the process is for editing or how far they're in it but i would imagine they're pretty close to being done if they already have a trailer on the way essentially so um i would say that dude is is seconds away or i'm i'm assuming he's starting or if not has already started on fantastic four yeah i think the script is is if i would guess i'd say it's almost done yeah, I'd say his script is almost done, and then boom, green light, start production, mm-hmm. or start pre rather, do some mm-hmm. uh, some pre visualization, and then before you know it, we're sitting in a theater with vaccines watching Fantastic. Yes, That's just gonna give happen. it to me. Ah, uh, so uh. we we finish off after after defeating Agatha and turning her back mm-hmm. into Agnes, um, which I think was was a really really mm-hmm. funny way because it. it I love how they didn't play that moment for laughs, but she's still there. She's like, okie dokie, artichokey. Like it, it, it really actually was crawls. creepy. It's yeah. really, it crawls, like it gets under your skin. And it does. I, I really want to just point out real quick too. Uh, I love the vision logic fight um, mm-hmm. because that is a Marvel way of fighting. Yeah. Like that's, it, it felt very reminiscent to the comics where they use logic to out, to outsmart the villain. Um, and I just wanted to point that out like that. I, I can't remember what movie we talked about, but um, they used science to end up figuring out how to stop a villain. And that's how Marvel does it, man. Like, that's, I think that movie was uh, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. That's the one you're thinking. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, definitely not. Um, no, it was, I can't remember who it was, but it was, it was definitely like when spider-man fights like sometimes he just like speaks from the heart in order to like you know like to dissuade a villain or Mm -hmm. or to to put a villain in a spot where they start to question themselves and then he he webs them up kind of thing especially with like dr octopus or some somebody who's got a similar mind yeah if you want to see like really good examples of that marvel kind of fighting is the spider-man animated series like every battle he does it's all like a battle of heart and will um and and you see like even the last the the season finale battle with like spider carnage that like that plea of like trying to get him to understand what's happening is so good and it brings such gravity um uh, but there is a marvel movie where they did that where they they use the the like this kind of heart and will to beat the villain um and it was like science i want to say it was ant-man but i could be wrong um but yeah i can't remember who it was anyway um oh it was dr strange it was dr oh, strange yes. yeah, and it was right. at the end when he when he tricked dormammu into being trapped into the constant loop that's yeah. like that's such a marvel way but yes going back to agatha 
I will say during that fight, what I really loved is how dark it got. Like I love seeing Wanda age so much. And then, um, and then I love that they used and the classic Marvel move, they used a trick that she would use in past movies, which was the mind control technique, which she used in age of Ultron, which again, it's kind of a whole full circle, brilliant move, small move, small gesture, but it's a full circle move and brings her back to the coven. And I love that the, again, ch- constantly changing the rules. And it was just so much fun to, to digest. And you know how I said I wanted action figures of vision and cataract. Mm. I gotta, you gotta slide them over and make some room on my shelf because the Scarlet witch costume. Wow. Yeah. This, this isn't oh, a sarcastic man. clap, even though it's slow. I'm not clapping. Yeah. Oh man. Vision. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you know, with Wanda, I will say a lot of people were like, okay, Civil War, like that's that's the new that's the new Wanda, right? But that's not Scarlet Witch. Like that's what we I think I think what's the beautiful thing about this is is what Marvel is doing is they'll give us the character, but they won't give us the hero until like the hero is established. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. and Wanda, don't get me wrong, she's been well established for a while, but but that's that but it was smart to stretch it out as far as they can because her character needed to be there's still some part of her story that needed to be resolved and once that happened and then we get the full actualization of of scarlet witch in that costume oh my god oh, and she looked <sighs> amazing like yeah straight up amazing cosplayers i challenge you i want to see i want to see attempts at that outfit like it is so meticulously designed i love the update in the crown that there's like some sort of design in it i'm going to dissect that design because i feel like there's something in there that we're not seeing even it looks royal it actually looks like in the comics Mm -hmm. it just looks like a thing on her head yeah like it's like like wolverine's thing it's like i you don't really need that but fine you know, mm-hmm. you do you, baby. But this actually looks like a crown. Like there's yeah. a reason she's wearing it. Ah, yeah, yep. yummy. No. It's so good. And and I will say that like there there is it seems to still there seems to be some hints. And this is again that Marvel conversation, which it seems to be the theme of this episode. Um, seems to be the conversation is is like there's more to the story. There's Mephisto or something. Something's going on because. Um, Agatha did say, you don't know what you're doing. Like you do not know what you're doing. And she seems to have these piercing red eyes. So, I mean, I think, I think the Mephisto discussion is not off the table yet. I don't, I don't think it is. Absolutely not. No. Yeah. She, she has no idea what she's done. I have a theory about the future. And if I forget about it, remind me, we're going to get to it in a second, but I need to, I need to give a shout out. To, oh, yes. to two things here. Uh, one of them is that uh, the theater, the movie theater um, that we see towards the end is playing a movie called Tannhauser Gate. Mm-hmm. And that is not in, a movie in real life, but it is the, the place where a battle took place in Blade Runner. And when Roy Batty is giving his speech, oh. he's also an android like Vision and they kind of look the same. He says, I was there at Tannhauser Gate. Uh, and that leads me to the main shout out I want to give, which is to whoever writes Vision's dialogue, because between what he says in Civil War about, uh, you know, accountability and power and, mm-hmm. and what he said last week. Causality. About, causality. Thank you. And what he said last week about what is grief, but, you know, love persevering to this week where he, he Wanda gets in on the fun, too, when they're saying their final goodbye Mm -hmm. And it's the beautiful moment I wanted it to be. And it was just as juicy as I'd hoped for. And they say, we've said goodbye before. It stands to reason. We'll say hello again. God damn it. Is that a feel? Is that ever beautiful? How is Vision's dialogue so good time after time? Somebody tell me how. Someone, again, this is, this is that emotional writing, man. Someone must have gone through something. And that's like, that's the kind of phrases they had. Um, I remember, I remember they were saying, uh, the guys from Avatar were saying that Iroh was based off of a mentor they had. And and that's oh, why wow. his, his like phrases about helping, you know, and like learning and all that stuff. Those are all things the mentor like told him. 
Um, I would pay untold amounts of money to meet that dude in real meet life. Meet the mentor of Iro, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, exactly. Um, I would, I would even argue, uh, Ma, Ma, Maz, Maz, Maz from, uh, Force Awakens was based on, uh, a teacher that, uh, JJ Abrams had. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that, that writing must come from those kind of sources because again, it's those, it's those kind of like passing the torch lines that you, you it's not something you could just it's not something you just write or be inspired to write. You must have known somebody that, that, that spoke to you in that way. Yeah. I mean, like I've, I've written a lot of books that mm-hmm. I am very proud of, but I can't think off the top of my head, any line of dialogue in any of those books that is anywhere near as profound <laughs> and beautiful as we've said goodbye before. It stands to reason. We'll say hello again. I, I will say though, you may not have the profound lines. Your characters do go through emotional torment and, and you, <laughs> you do have to read through it. Like, like side scrollers in the beginning of the book, like when you're reading about uh, the main character and he's just, uh, he's just going through hell, man. Like <laughs> he's on the couch for like days and he's just eating pizza. Like it's, 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 it's painful to get through. Like, yeah, a, a profound one-liner would have been nice in there, but no, you got to read through that emotion. You got to go through every every grueling detail to feel the character's pain. Uh, bless you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah, but, that pizza was gross. It had his hair in it. Oh <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, but uh, going back to uh, going back to the writing, yeah, it's it's incredibly done. Um, I I loved the way Wanda resolved everything, the, the goodbye moments were really heartfelt. Um, there was something I wanted to get to about that. Um, I, I also think that one person we're not talking about enough of is Jimmy Woo. Love Jimmy. Love me some Jimmy, mm. man. Give me more Jimmy. He escaped from his handcuffs using magic. He did. I love, but I love the evolution of that character. And, and, I hope this theme of like playing. Um, oh, I remember where I wanted to go after this. Okay, yes. So I hope this theme of of characters evolving in the inter, in the interconnectivity of stories. I hope that continues to play out. I really do, um, because it, Darcy and Jimmy were great examples of characters that deserve more story. But not only that, they, their stories were elevated, like completely on a whole new level. That were that was just so much fun to to watch and absorb. Um, so that being said, uh, yes, with alluding to Mephisto and talking about vision going off and all this stuff, you know, where is MCU going? Like we, now we have a week break next week. We have a week off, uh, to, to collect ourselves, (laughs) get back all in, uh, get everything all sorted out. Um, and then it's right back into it with Falcon and the winter soldier. I cannot wait uh, the stakes are high. T- conversations are already going. I think this is going to be a great look at Project Rebirth. Uh, and I think we might get a look into the weapons program, which I talked about in a past WandaVision episode. Um, I actually think that they might be introducing the Young Avengers. I think that actually might be the next Avengers movie. Um, it's mm-hmm. not going to come for a while. I don't think it's going to come for a while, but... I definitely have a feeling that we're getting the young Avengers. We already have three of them being uh, three of them have already been introduced. We have, um, we have Miss Marvel, we have Wiccan and we have speed already. That's three out of seven members. So I think we're well on our way. And the reason why I say this is because uh, the fourth member might be introduced in Falcon and winter soldier. Uh, and I think that is Patriot because Patriot is the son of Isaiah Bradley and Isaiah Bradley is in Falcon and Winter Soldier and Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, I, Isaiah Bra- Bradley was one of the few to actually have a, a successful, um, a successful uh, attempt at recreating the uh, Captain America uh, formula, super soldier formula. So. Ooh, yeah. Well, we're definitely getting a lot of youngsters mm-hmm. in phase four. It's full of, young folk so oh, I don't and we know. got kate bishop so that's already we four kate we're missing bishop. three wait is she showing up in falcon and winter soldier too no, oh i don't know that's a good question i don't know i i think marvel's very careful about who they introduce and i think they learned that lesson from civil war because they wanted to introduce wasp but they already said like there was like you're introducing black panther or you're introducing you know uh you're reintroducing ant-man and ant-man 
you introduced Giant Man. So it's like if we added Wasp, it just wouldn't. And Spider Man. Yeah, like and Spider Man, of course. Like yeah. you're already getting a lot. So I don't know. Maybe it is a two character rule. Maybe they only can introduce two characters in a project at a time to 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 give them enough groundwork, right? Like who knows? Wu might have a bigger story because he's might be a big interconnected character. So you already had Wu and you already had, you know, Spectrum. Um, who knows? Maybe. I mean, and, and like if they're if they're seed characters, then yeah, you don't want to plant too many seeds, especially in a movie like Civil War that had like a bajillion characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in terms of the future, I I think that there's something cool that we're going to get. So we know that Cataract is out there somewhere. Yeah. He said, I'm Vision, and he flew away. Now, as much as, please don't hate me for saying this, everybody. Paul Bettany is amazing. Vision is a treasure. But I, I kind of wish he was dead and dead is dead. Right? Because now that's another thing from Infinity War mm-hmm. that has been taken away. You know, that's another high stake of Infinity War that we've lost. Like, the snap, undone. Gamora, yeah, she's dead, but now we got her back through time travel. Vision, dead, and now back. Like, stop undoing death. Don't be J.J. Abrams. You know, just let death be death. So I hope if we see Cataract again, which we probably will, I hope it's fleetingly. You know, I hope he's not just like, I'm green again, and I'm back on the team. Like, make it more profound because then infinity war looking back really like, you know, in 15 years when we're rewatching phases one through six, we're going to look at infinity war at that point and be like, wow, nothing in this movie matters anymore. And that's sad. I don't want that to happen. So keep cataract away from us for a while, if you can help it. Um, but here's what I think we're going to get, Ryan. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really psyched for this. And I know you bring it on, buddy. Bring it on. So, you know, I can't remember what the line of dialogue was. I wish I I did. But in Infinity War, when all the heroes are kind of talking, and I think it's when Vision says, like, I've got to get the stone out of me or whatever. And they're all trying to figure out how are we going to do this? And Captain America says something along the lines of, I have an idea. And then you hear some jungle drums. And then we cut and we see the giant panther statue of Wakanda, right? Yeah. And the people in the audience around the world they they go bananas they're like oh my god what kind of right and you do like you get the black panther theme right that was a marvel moment am i right that could have said it better it's it's a it's a beautiful moment in a movie full of beautiful moments so here's what i think is going to happen let's say i'm thinking this happens maybe in i don't know doctor strange multiverse of madness or like avengers five whatever you know some some big movie down the road same kind of thing's going to happen where we need we need some something needs to be done. There's a powerful villain and we we don't have the tools to defeat them. Wanda is going to glance around and say, "I think I have an idea." And all of a sudden we see a sign that says Westview. She goes back and talks to Agatha Harkness. That's that's where I'm going, man. And then people are going to go nuts, especially if the threat they're dealing with is on a Mephisto level. Could, well, we okay, so we do know Doctor Strange's villain is Nightmare. We know Nightmare is a villain, and we also know, um, we also know that Baron Mordo is also apparently reported to return as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I think is interesting is I think Kevin Feige has developed the language, and we need to start paying a little closer attention because we focus on. We focus on, for example, the text message to the aerospace engineer when we should be focusing on things like things like where Cap says, you know, uh, or Nick Fury says, you know, you World War II guys did some pretty sketchy stuff. And he's like, yeah, we did stuff that we weren't proud of and that didn't help us sleep at night. Those are those are the clues we need to be deep diving into, because I think those clues are going to play a bigger role. Vision's line about causality is, was was perfectly placed because I think uh, we're seeing that very theme in everything now. Uh, Wanda's Wanda's you know world, Wanda's vision, if you will. Um, there was a causality mm-hmm. to it, right? There's there's all these things. Um, uh, so 
So I think we need to be smarter about looking into these details. Speaking of that, and speaking of shout outs, um, we need to talk about uh, one of our viewers who reached out to us. Oh, yeah. Uh, reached out to us in the uh, last episode, I believe it was. Uh, and I am looking up Jonathan E. Davis. Jonathan uh, Davis. Yes. Um, he was explaining about the stone, and we were actually pretty much on point. Um, that that vision's essence was in Wanda, which Wanda was able to create a version of him. So Jonathan Eve Davis, man, shout outs. Thank you so much for reaching out to us. We really appreciate that. Um, really, really appreciate it. Uh, and yes, so that was a great question. But I, that's also the theme of what I'm talking about is look for those hints. Those are the keys to how Kevin Feige is building this world. I really think that with Falcon and Winter Soldier, Cap talked about you know, yeah, we did things we that didn't make us sleep at night. I think that's what we're going to see. And we're going to see, I think we're going to see the creation of the government's approach to trying to recreate Project Rebirth, where they try the weapons program and they go through we weapons one, through weapons 10, which gives us weapon X, which gives us Wolverine. But I really think that that's how it's going to go down. I think they're going to try weird, weird science experiments. And we're going to see what evil looks like from that and then realize that the government which which brings me back to civil war and talking about how cap was like and this is where i think the whole falcon winter soldier story is based on when he looked at the sokovia accords and said you know talked about like it's it's run by people with agendas and that's yeah. going to be the source of the entire story of falcon winter soldier i like it i like it and that's coming up soon only two weeks away. Uh, and in the meantime, we either have a week off or who knows, maybe we'll get that uh, alleged 10th episode of WandaVision where the whole thing is just Beast and Mephisto playing cards and waiting by the phone for somebody to invite them. And, and the, phone <laughs> the hex portal just opens up. Okay, it's your turn. Go, go, go. Yeah. Go, go, go. Quick, guys. They're asking for you. Um, Actually, no, I think there's a behind the scenes episode that's coming out next week. Yeah, there is. There's that like mm -hmm. they did with the Mandalorian, which are great. I love those little round table things. Yeah. Uh, but our, our post credit scenes were, were beautiful. I think they were perfect. We got two of them like we do at the end of any Marvel movie. Uh, we got more scrolls, which I will admit the scrolls still don't excite me as much because I don't, I have no idea where they're going with it. Uh, but I'm assuming that scroll woman was talking about Talos when she said an old friend of your mom's, right? Yeah. She said he, and I don't know any other males who would be friends of, of Maria Rambo. Technically Fury. Ah, True. Technically ah, Fury. Um, Good call, man. I forgot about Fury. Yeah. So technically Fury. Uh, I would say that one was a bit more ambiguous. And again, I think it's got to go back to that language, that theme I was talking about with like language um, <laughs> with Kevin Feige, because I think there's something we're missing with the foreshadowing. If I'm going to break it down and define it, there's something that fans are missing with the foreshadowing. And it's hard because it's hard to go on something someone says, like Cap being like, oh, you know, this uh, this is run by people with agendas and you know you know what if they send us somewhere we don't want to go what if they send us somewhere we want to go and or somewhere we think we should go and they don't send us right like all those little things it's hard to build a theory off of because it's not visual it's not something tangible but i really think that those are the clues that are going to lead us to where the story is going next um uh, you know um so that's that's the interesting like like even iron man was talking about he wasn't tricked he was shown so with wanda so i think that's something about wanda's story that we didn't pick up enough of and and it's hard to build off of so yeah um that's that's where i'm going with that and i forgot what your question was so i feel like i'm missing out on oh moment. no there was no question no i like that i was just talking about the, the how the scroll oh yeah the scroll yeah so yeah. oh yes no so there was a conclusion i was getting to the conclusion was I was getting to is I think there's something in Miss Marvel that is missed. And and though we already did rewatch, I think that I, I need to ponder now and, and think about like, like, uh, like about um, like, cause apparently Marvel was saying that this new prototype ship was supposed to end the war. Right. And talk about that. So there are these clues that we're not picking up of, of enough of that. I think that are there and same with Spider-Man, uh, 
uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, which I feel like I now need to make sure I rewatch one more time just in case. Because <laughs> I, I do, I agree with you. Right now, I'm not as hyped with this with the Skrulls and the Secret Invasion because I don't get the motivation of the Skrulls. My understanding is they're just running from the Kree. So why is there a war? Yeah, and especially because it's like, you know, Far From Home was the last thing and then this, and they both have, they both end with a post credit scroll scene. And I'm just like, I, the scrolls aren't, you know, I got no investment in the scrolls yet. And yeah. I think what we have to remember is that this is, this is essentially the Iron Man one of whatever the hell this saga is. Yeah. We have no idea what this saga is going to be about yet. So we can't look at any, any seed they plant and say, that doesn't look relevant because mm-hmm. what the hell do we know? Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I do love the second scene where where it looks like uh, Wanda's in like Nepal oh, or she's just somewhere out in the so middle of nowhere. Cool. So she cool. found a, a farmhouse that's kind of like it looks like if Thanos's farmhouse was a bit more warm and cuddly and you know not in space. Uh, and she's just chilling there. She's making tea. She's in her her sweats. She doesn't even care. And then she's astral projecting and reading the uh, the dark hole, but she's doing it while she's awake. And that that's already a notch on the belt above a certain uh, doctor who may more name may not be uh, named strange. Ooh, I can't wait. I, and, and we know, we know that Wanda is going to be in Dr. Strange. So we know that her story has, and apparently, so this is now, this is the layering that's going to get interesting because apparently this story has something to do with Dr. Strange. So mm-hmm. that very end credit sequence could be that small little timbit to the first stage in connecting that story and Agatha and the whole nine yards. So this is, this is the coolest example of how phase four is going to do all this interconnectivity. Yeah. And this was supposed to come on that old original slate. It was supposed to come right before Doctor the strange Street. movie. Yeah. And I, I was wondering, do you think anything has been changed in the story of what we saw in WandaVision because of the change in scheduling? I think there has been some changes. I think there has because they've had there more had time. to have been there. Right? there have, they've had more time. Yeah, especially like there. Initially, there was supposed to be the Falcon and Winter Soldier show, and then like at least three movies mm-hmm. before WandaVision. Yep, Shang Chi, Eternals, and Black Widow. Obviously, all those movies and that show are going to drop some new lore on us so you know what if like initially i don't know something the mandarin i don't know something something from one of those things was supposed to trickle down into wandavision even if it was just for a bit and now they had to take it out you know like i feel like something had to be different Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think you're right uh because i think the original order was black widow then it was Eternals. Eternals. And then it was supposed to be Falcon and Winter Soldier. And then, no, sorry, other way around. Shang-Chi, then Falcon and Winter Soldier. So, because I think Shang-Chi was in February originally. It Could was, be wrong. I think it was, it was supposed to be Black Widow in May, mm-hmm. then Falcon Winter Soldier in the summer. And this is 2020 we're talking about here. So, May Black Widow. Oh, Super yes. Yeah, Falcon it was, Soldier, yeah. November Eternals. Mm-hmm. And then February or March, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi yeah. And then I think summer, WandaVision, and then November, Doctor Strange. Yes. And now yeah. that's completely all scrambled up. So yeah, I'm, I really, like, it might have, like, I, I don't think it's anything significant, but I think it, it could have been even something so much as like a line of dialogue, like Hayward saying mm-hmm. something along the lines of, you know, after Fin Fang Foom came through the portal, we had to make sure that Sword was there, you know, just something that he references that he can't reference anymore because it hasn't happened yet. Actually, I think that I think that WandaVision actually might be hinting at a bigger story because, again, I think I think what will happen in Doctor Strange will explain some of the events in WandaVision or or vice versa or actually both ways. I think it works both ways. Yeah, they'll feed off each other. I mm-hmm. like that. Ah, oh, boy, I, I I wanted to close with something interesting because I I thought the the odds of this happening were were so crazy, Ryan. But uh, you're familiar with Ducktales, right? Of course. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Have you watched the woo oh, I love that song. Have you watched the new DuckTales that came out a couple of years ago? Right? I have. 
amazing. It is so one funny. of like legitimately one of the funniest cartoons I've ever seen in my life. If you yeah. guys have not seen the new DuckTales, I think it's from 2017 is when it started. It's on Disney Plus, the first two seasons anyway. Go watch them. Well, I lost track of when it was coming out. And apparently last year, season three started coming out almost exactly a year ago. Like back in April, they started pulling out season three. And I just read that today. After I watched WandaVision, I was just like, you know, writing a bit. And I'm like, what happened to DuckTales? And I looked it up and I saw that it was, it had come out and it was, it's just about to end like right now. So I was like, oh, I want to watch some of season three. I still haven't seen it. So I watched a couple episodes of season three. And I swear to God, Ryan, the second episode of season three of the new DuckTales has the exact same plot as WandaVision. No way. It, it started off where they all walk into the room and on this new DuckTales show, they're in like the animation style is a little bit different and their, their outfits are different. Like it's kind of like a minimalist style to their outfits. Like it looks different from the eighties DuckTales is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. It starts off where they all walk into the house dressed in their eighties DuckTales clothes. And I'm like, what's happening? And then you hear sitcom laughter and everybody is like, weirded out and they're like what's going on where's that laughter coming from and they're trapped in this sitcom world because of something and i don't want to you know spoilers for a year old ducktales thing here but <laughs> what ends up happening is donald made a wish that uh, his family would be more normal and he happened to be sitting on top of the magic lamp from the ducktales movie and that genie came out of the lamp i swear to god this is real voiced by jaleel white and he's like, your wish is granted. And he he stuck them using his his magic hex. He stuck them in this sitcom world. And then like Huey, Dewey, and Louie are like, where's this laughter coming from? We got to break out of here. And they had to undo the spell to break out of the sitcom. Oh my God. I got I got to see that now. That's so clever. I actually love, like, like I never finished DuckTales, the new one. Mm -hmm. But I actually, when I watched the episodes, they were... Like I actually busted my gut laughing. Like there's it's, one, there's one where Donald gets stuck. Uh, Donald and the, the the gang get stuck in this like gambling casino, and and then this guy's <laughs> this guy's like all about like capturing souls because so, like they as long as they gamble they feed his power or something like that. And Donald just has like the worst luck, and it's so funny. He gets so mad, and it's it's priceless. But anyways, that's crazy. And this is again. This is, I'm going to bring this back in to wrap this whole thing up beautifully. This is the Marvel magic is, is in making you so invested in the world that you're going to start having like these beautiful mind moments and you're going to start theorizing where are the stories going to go next? And that's the big question. But I really think that the clues are in the words, not in the, not in the visual clues. So we have to keep, uh, we have to listen very carefully to what they're foreshadowing. That's going to be the key, guaranteed. Beautifully said, brother. Uh, so everybody watch that DuckTales episode, uh, if you can find it. it. The episode's called Quack Pack. They actually make reference to the show they used to have called Quack Pack. It even has a fake commercial in the middle. Like, oh it's, I, I swear to God, like, I don't know what was going on there. But anyways, uh, but, but that has been the series finale of WandaVision here on Infinity Rewatch. Um, now... As we usually, we, we usually like do ratings and things like that, but I, I don't want to do a rating yet, Ryan, because it's still too fresh. I want to wait a while before we so rate So fresh. It. But uh, I, I think it's, I think it's up there for me. It's a, it's a very, very well put together little show. Yeah. So uh, let's, I think it's time uh, for us to say goodbye for now. But remember, we've said goodbye before so it stands to reason we'll say hello again uh ryan where can the good people find you when you're not in television land wow that was brilliant that was, that was really good <laughs> um yeah you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash xbox canada hosting some wonderful streams on games and you can find me on twitter which is where jonathan e davis shout out to our boy thank you so much for that comment loved it um yeah uh we uh you can find me on twitter at crusader online yes thank you so much jonathan davis we love hearing from you uh you can find me not on twitter unfortunately but you can find me on the instagram well you can't find me on twitter but i'm like 
not there. I'm like a cardboard cutout of me. Mm-hmm. But you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, Andrew Fantasia, as well as on YouTube at Andrew Fantasia. The, that's the name of my channel. And uh, on the Rebel Scum Podcast Network, also talking about this Star Wars, because that's also a thing. Uh, and who knows, maybe Beast will show up in episode 10, Ray's Revenge. As and, Sebastian Stan. <laughs> as Sebastian Stan, but then it turns out he's just Ralph Boner all <laughs> along. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, WandaVision, thank you for being as great as you were. And all of you, thanks for listening and have a marvelous day. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.